All right, guys, hope you're doing well. So, hope you had a happy Easter. This is going to be quite a short video, I think, today. We'll see. Um, be super busy. We've had four days off for Easter, so, um, you know, everyone's probably the same. We just rammed with, with work. But I did get a question on um, Instagram today saying, how can you distinguish between slow and fast oxidation based on symptoms? Um, so yeah, there are some sort of key things when it comes to slow and fast oxidation that you can basically look out for. Um, you know, slow oxidation is basically like going in the slow lane of a highway or a motorway. Fast oxidation is the opposite. Um, ideally you want to be in the middle, you know, a lot of people think that fast oxidation is better than slow oxidation, but you know, really fast oxidation definitely has its issues. Um, which we'll sort of, sort of discuss. But a lot of the symptoms with uh, slow and fast oxidation are just talking about opposites. And uh, I'm going to be talking about opposites in this video. But like I said, obviously, the the sort of best way to be is kind of down the middle. You know, a, a mild slow oxidizer or a mild fast oxidizer. And you shouldn't really be experiencing any of the key symptoms that I sort of talk about. Um, because you're feeling pretty pretty balanced and sturdy. So the key symptom that you generally get from slow oxidizers is a sluggishness and fatigue. Um, yeah, just just feeling feeling like a, a tortoise. And the opposite in fast oxidation, you feel quite speedy and quite quick. Everything's running, you know, at a high speed. Um, Another thing that happens when you're in fast oxidation is people generally sweat more because the body's metabolism and, and oxidation is going at a very fast rate. So people generally tend to sweat more. And then conversely, in slow oxidation, people generally have struggle, have uh, have a lot of struggles with, with sweating. A lot of people in slow oxidation who start saunas for the first time, for example, um, struggle to sweat. Another symptom in fast oxidation would be anxiety or panic. Just pause this a minute. So, uh, yeah, anxiety or panic in uh, fast oxidation. One of the reasons for that is that, you know, because the body is going so, um, so quickly, an individual can actually become too overwhelmed by that and uh and become uh, get panicky and get an anxious you you, you, you cannot be anxious in slow oxidation um so there are similarities there uh but really probably panic attacks is more related to um fast oxidation so physically generally slow oxidizers especially copper you know people like coppery ones generally look more younger looking Fast oxidizers generally look more older looking or a little bit more rougher. Uh, slow oxidizers look uh, more younger. Fast oxidizers generally put on weight around the stomach, so you get an apple shaped body. Slow oxidizers generally get sort of a, a pet, sort of a pear shaped body. Um, so those are the main differences, really. Now we have we. We've always been taught in hair analysis in hair analysis that you can't really figure out someone's oxidation rate based on symptoms. Um, I am gonna I am gonna test that theory. I do want to create a little application that will go through a lot of different questions, um, and I think that we might be able to uh, potentially uh, figure out you know where someone's at in terms of oxidation rate, hair analysis patterns, um, um, healing reactions, etc. based on symptoms. I have made a healing reaction application on hairanalysis.report forward slash troubleshooting and that actually does a really, really good job at figuring out uh, what likelihood that a certain metal is actually being eliminated from the body. And I think you can do a similar thing with, with, um, with oxidation rates and um, and some hair analysis patterns. And I think it would be really useful to use something like that before you get a hair test in. Let's say someone's going through something and they've only just done a hair test three weeks back. I think you could create something that can provide 
a bit of an idea of what's going off, um, you know, uh, to a very, very high degree, in my opinion. But it, it would need quite a lot of testing. Because sometimes, you know, you can't get a hair test because of the individuals being just done a, done a hair test like uh, two or three weeks back. Um, other symptoms that you might get from a slow and fast oxidizer, I mean, not necessarily symptoms, but if you give a fast oxidizer, you know, if you think someone's in fast ox oxidation and you tell them to, to have a lot of fat or oil and it calms them down, then that's a good indicator that they're in fast oxidation. Um, if you give someone in slow oxidation that they will tend to slow down further, which, you know, they'll feel worse. Whereas a fast oxidizer will feel better because they're calmer. That's one way of figuring it out. Um, slow oxidizers generally feel a little bit, little bit better to, you know, on, on a few carbohydrates, but that sort of, uh, you know, has its issues. Um, but yeah, that's it for this video. I just wanted to come on and, and commit to my daily videos. Um, but yeah, if you read Dr. Wilson's articles on slow oxidation and fast oxidation, he gives a long list of, uh, of different symptoms on there. Uh, when it comes to slow oxidation and fast oxidation. Alright guys, so thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.